So this is an interesting point, right? So when it comes to self-esteem, feeling good enough, commitment, there's a big link in our relationships, right? Maybe you're listening to this and you're like, ah, oh, you know, I've struggled to commit. And I think that's because, you know, I don't like talking about the future. I'm afraid of being with somebody and, and, you know, losing my freedom and so forth. That can be true, right? But there's a part of commitment that also is allowing someone to really see who we are, right? And for them to see us as we see ourselves, right? So if you often have this experience of like you struggling to take compliments, you're struggling to take praise or encouragement, or when people tell you, well done, you caveat that with like, oh, it was easy, or I didn't really do anything and things like that. Like you have this picture of yourself of actually like, you're not necessarily worthy of praise, worthy of, of good word, worthy of being um, seen as valuable, right? How do you feel about the statement when you say to yourself, like, I am good enough? What comes up for you? Is there like, you know, you're like, that's not true. You're feeling of disgust, right? Or even just subtle. It might not be 100% disgust, it might be just a subtle feeling of, right? This really will affect how you commit to people. Because if I feel I'm good enough and I'm good enough as a relational being, as a, as a partner, and I believe in my ability to overcome problems and deal with issues inside relationships and relationally and sexually and intimately and from a communication point of view, right? I believe that I am good enough to sort out things or I'm good enough to be with, right? I'll commit to things, right? I'll lean into relationships because I think I'm worthy of love. But if I don't think I'm good enough and I don't think I'm worthy of encouragement and praise and those sorts of things, right, then I will struggle to be in a committed relationship because ultimately we're always going to be in this cycle of, ah, oh, I don't know if I'm good enough for this. This person treats me well, treats me kindly, loves me. I'm not good enough for this. We'll push them away, right? But we'll also simultaneously really struggle to commit to them because what's going to keep coming up is, unconsciously or even consciously for you but most likely unconsciously oh shit if we get closer right somehow they're going to realize that i'm not as good as they think i am so like over on one side you've got this this your partner who thinks you're an amazing person who loves you dearly and blah 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 or just your date who thinks you're a cool dude right and then you've got your opinion of yourself over here which is like i'm not very good at anything um I'm not very good at being a good partner. I'm not very good at sex. Like it can be whatever it is that just this underlying feeling maybe of not good enoughness, right? Of, of a self-esteem, which is really the story we tell ourselves about ourselves. That is, we're not valuable in some way. We're not good enough. We're not smart enough. We're not attractive enough. Like all very and very variations of that, or like we need to work hard for, um, to be seen as valuable and good enough, right? So there's this dissidence, there's this tension between these two points. Our partner thinks we're amazing and we don't think we're amazing. So we're always in a relationship with someone and we're dealing with this tension because it's like, they're like, oh my God, I love you so much, you're amazing. And we're gonna to wanna to push that away because it's uncomfortable because it doesn't tally up with this belief that we have about ourselves. So this will lead to us pushing our partners away, worrying about, or even unconsciously, right, happening, feeling the emotions of, oh shit, if they know who I am, I'm going to be in trouble. They're going to reject me. They're going to leave me. And then this is where it gets even more complex is that we're thinking that they're going to find out about our not good enoughness. So we create situations and scenarios in our relationship to sabotage the relationship and end it. Yeah, that might be, it could be cheating. You know, I think this is one of the huge reasons why people cheat is they don't feel good enough for the love they're getting and they cheat. Um, not always, but it's one of the reasons I've definitely seen with the men I've worked with. And it's to, you know, sabotaging the relationship, like um, talking themselves out of the relationship, talking other people into talking them out of the relationship, right? Messing up the relationship in some way, right? not believing the relationship has a future and finding the faults, right? Finding the reasons why it can't have a, uh, a future and generally not believing that the future can happen because of who they are, because of their deficiencies and their not good enoughness. And this has a huge impact on our relationships, right? Really, really big thing. So you now thinking, I've really explained this and you're like, oh shit, I might be seeing this in myself. So this is self-esteem stuff really, right?
self-esteem work, like believing that we're good enough for love, believing and accepting that we can deal with the challenges that come up in relationship. And I've, I've, I've been through a lot of this, especially around believing to deal with the challenges, because for me, for many years, I was like, I can't, um, because in this moment I struggle with conflict, I'm never going to be able to deal with conflict. It's a very black and white, like, ah, oh, because it's true now, it's going to be true forever. Right. Or because I don't know how to love you the way you want, that means I've failed and I never get to do that. And that being proof of me not being good enough as well. And I see this again in men. So what do we do? What do we do? Some of his really simple things is like accepting um, that we don't know how to solve the problems of the future, but believing that we either when we get to that point, we'll know how to solve that problem or believing that we'll have the resources and capabilities to do so. Resources and capabilities doesn't mean that you have to solve the problem yourself. You may just have people around you that can help you. You can seek advice and help for these things. But the, one of the reasons why we struggle with that idea is because often when we don't feel good enough, right, expressing to people that we don't know how to do something or we are unsure how to do something or we don't have a clue what to do is confirmation of us not being good enough. So we shy away from getting support and help from people, right? So some of the transforming this is starting to get support from people in areas of our lives, like asking for help. Like, you know, I think I listened to a podcast and it said, start with asking people to pass you things on tables, you know, like when you have this kind of not good enoughness, you'll find yourself trying to do everything yourself, you know, doing everything alone, lone wolfing the whole thing. Right. But you don't have to do that. Right. You don't have to do it alone. So remember that the antidote for this is, is seeking support and help taken in praise and love, accepting the love, like opening up to it. Instead of being this hard shell that's pushing it away, starting to go, okay, I'm going to accept that this person means well for me and accept that their opinion of me could be true. Yeah. Finding evidence of how good we are, finding evidence of their opinion of us, you know, like really listening, right? Maybe they say, oh, what I really love about you is, you know, you're a really great listener and that's part of being a great person, right? Or that you're super kind and helpful. That's part of being a great person. Right. And then we slowly start to shift our view of ourselves, And also by seeing the things that we do, not just the things that we do, but the person that we are and how that sends ripples through the world. So we start to accept that. And in a relational context, like the commitment pieces, you have to slowly just be like, oh, I will be able to deal with this in the future. Can I believe that? Can I believe that the future me will have the capabilities and capacities to deal with this thing in the future? And just accepting that because that's a, a huge step because when we are willing to accept that are willing to accept something right the future can start to shift and change from that one story of doom and gloom that you've believed right to many different stories that are perfectly great and happy right and it's about shifting the focus from the one doom and gloom story that you think is the only way it can be to realizing things can unfold in, a, in like a magnitude and multitude of beautiful and positive ways. So, yeah, I hope this was a, a, a useful, a useful chat.